Uh, so uh, I'm working on a project uh, on the topic of investigating the role of magnetic reconnection in MHT decaying turbulence under my supervisor Pallavi Bhatt. Uh, so uh, uh, it's well known from the literature that inverse energy transfer occurs in 3D, uh, 3D decaying turbulence only when there is a magnetic helicity or non-zero uh, helical magnetic field present in the system. However, recent simulations have shown that uh, uh, inverse energy transfer can occur in non-helical 3D MHT turbulent system as well. So if we start with such system, we can see there are small magnetic structures present on 3D domain. And if the system is allowed to decay freely over time, then these magnetic structures grow on scale and become larger, or there is the inverse transfer of magnetic energy taking place. So this I have taken from this paper by Pallavi. And so in that paper, they have investigated that uh, magnetic reconnection is the underlying mechanism behind the inverse energy transfer in such non-helical 3D helical system. So in order to do that, they first started with a 2D non-helical system. So uh, here in this plot, you can see, it is the contour plot of magnetic vector potential component. The red and the blue colors uh, denote the opposite polarity. And when the system is allowed to decay freely over time, then uh, the magnetic islands merge together to form larger magnetic islands. And this is happening via the formation of current sheets between two merging islands and leading to magnetic reconnection and forming of larger magnetic islands. So uh, 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 the, in, in both the 2D and the 3D uh, non-helical decaying turbulent system, the magnetic energy decays with a power law in time uh, with a slope of t to the power minus one, both in 2D and 3D. And the peak of the magnetic uh, power spectrum uh, shifts from larger wave number to smaller wave number, the dark curve notes later time, both in the 2D and the 3D. And uh, on plotting the BRMS with time, uh, the different colors uh, denote the different Lundquist numbers, simulations are different Lundquist numbers. And uh, this is for the 2D and this is for the 3D. And on normalizing the time axis with the reconnection time scale, the BRMS curves at different Lundquist numbers collapse onto each other. The collapse is very smooth for the 2D case, although the collapse is not that smooth for the 3D case, but the distance between two BRMS curves at successively higher Lundquist numbers decreases. And so these results indicate that uh, reconnection time scale is the dynamical time scale for non-helical um, MHT decaying turbulence. Following that paper, uh, Hosking and Shakushin came up with their paper in which they derived scaling laws for MHT decaying turbulence by assuming reconnection time scale as the dynamical time scale for helical decaying turbulence as well. Uh, in, uh, for helical MHT decaying turbulence, uh, starting from magnetically dominated initial condition, the volume averaged magnetic helicity density is large and it remains conserved with time. Um, that is, uh, 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 this uh, mean magnetic helicity can be taken as uh, A dot B, A is del cross B, so it can be taken uh, approximated as B square L and it is large and it remains constant with time. And so in order to derive the magnetic energy power law, decay in time for decaying MHT turbulence, we assume the general scaling B alpha LS constant where alpha can be set according to the type of conserved quantity. And uh, so this, and the reconnection, uh, reconnection time scale is taken in the Sweet Parker regime and reconnection in the Sweet Parker regime is depends on the balance between the, uh, depends on the balance between this, uh, this is the induction equation on the inductive term and the resistive dissipative term. And therefore, depending on the, uh, the reconnection time scale depends on the value of eta. And therefore we have uh, uh, reconnection time scale defined as Sn to the power one by N L by V where Sn is the hyper Lundquist number and is the order of hyper uh, dissipation. L is the uh, correlation length scale and V is the correlation magnetic field. And in order to derive this mag uh, magnetic energy power law DK, we substitute this uh, DK time scale by the reconnection time scale and, uh, and uh, the general scaling. And then we obtain the solution for power law as B square uh, is, uh, uh, can be uh, approximated as T to the power minus two N by 12 N plus N minus alpha minus one, which means uh, this power law will depend on the type of conserved quantity alpha and also the N that is the 
order of dissipation, whether it is Laplacian or hyper dissipation. So therefore, depending on the conserving uh, conserved quantity, we can obtain different uh, power law for if helicity mean helicity is conserved, we obtain a power law of t to the power minus 0.271 for magnetic field dk. And similarly for vector potential square, we'll obtain t to the power minus 0.5 for n equals to two Laplacian dissipation and so on. And also for uh, like helicity variance, we'll obtain this for n equals to six hyper three dissipation t to the power minus 0.43. So the question that arises is reconnection indeed the dynamical time scale in helical decaying MHT turbulence, and what are the conserved quantities for helical and non-helical decaying MHT turbulence? So in order to answer that, we use a uh, pencil code to run direct numerical simulation of decaying MHT turbulence in both 2D and 3D, and the, where the following MHT equations are solved: continuity equation, momentum equation, and the induction equation. So rho is the density, and u is the velocity field and F viscosity is the viscous force. And uh, uh, this induction equation is the uncurled version in terms of the vector potential A. Usually it is dho B by uh, delta B by dt, but, is, but, here, but here it is delta A by uh, del T. And related to the magnetic field by B equals to del cross A, current density J equals to del cross B by mu naught, and D by dt is the adjective derivative. And for the 2D runs, we substitute this uh, delta Z equals to zero and the vector components in the Z direction are eliminated. So here you can see. So here you can see the uh, evolution of magnetic field component with with time for 3D decaying helical MHT simulation. The small magnetic structures grows uh, in scale with time, and uh, which we say is occurring via magnetic reconnection. And then coming to the results. So for the decay of 2D and 3D helical turbulence. Uh, we already said that for the helical case, mean magnetic, theoretically, that mean magnetic helicity is the conserved quantity. Numerically, also we get, so this is for the helical 2D MHT simulation and helical 3D MHT simulation. These are the decay rates of different quantities. The black one corresponds to the uh, uh, vector potential square, green magne magnetic energy, red is the mean magnetic helicity, and uh, blue one is the uh, helicity variance. So helicity variance, of course, we can't take. So we can see from both the things that, both the plots that the red uh, curve, which is the decay rate of uh, uh, mean magnetic helicity is uh, lowest. And, uh, and it, uh, so this shows that mean magnetic helicity is the conserved quantity for helical MHT uh, decay simulations. So um, for the, 2D case, when we plot BRMS versus T, then the, this BRMS doesn't show any power law decay in time. So we take the helical part of the total BRMS, this BHRMS versus T, and this shows the power law decay in time. And on normalizing the time axis with the reconnection time scale, the BHRMS curves at different Lundquist numbers, uh, the black one corresponds to the highest Lundquist number. They tend to collapse on uh, each other and showing a power law decay in time as T to the power minus 0.3. And coming to the 3D helical uh, MHT decaying turbulence. So here, uh, here again, we when we plot the BRMS versus T, the dotted line corresponds to the URMS. The solid line corresponds to the BRMS. When we plot the BRMS versus T, it decays with the power law in time. And uh, when we normalize the time axis with the reconnection time scale, the BRMS curve, they tend to collapse onto each other, although the collapse is not as smooth as the 2D, but we can, we, we can see that the distance between the two uh, BRMS curves with successively higher Lundquist numbers decreases quite significantly. And we can say that uh, they tend to collapse. So similarly for the BHRMS thing, uh, it, uh, the, the distance between the curves, BHRMS curves on normalizing the time axis with the reconnection time scale uh, decreases significantly. And so these results suggest that reconnection time scale is the dynamical time scale for a helical 3D MHT decaying turbulent system. So uh, coming to the non-helical 2D and the 3D decay, so for non-helical uh, system, uh, the question is, what is the conserved quantity? So uh, this is the decay rate plot uh, of 3D non-helical system, 3D non-helical decaying turbulence system. Uh, so here again, the green one uh, is for ARMS, uh, green one is for the magnetic energy, the black corresponds to the uh, vector potential square, and the uh, red and the blue corresponds to the mean magnetic helicity and the helicity variance. 
So in the Hosking and Shrek machine, they said they have taken this uh, helicity variance as the conserved quantity. But as we can see, this helicity variance uh, is very uh, is wiggly, and we cannot uh, take this as a conserved quantity. This is also because uh, have five minutes helicity, left. Helicity variance versus T, if we take, it is very small than the magnetic energy square term, and therefore it cannot be taken as a constraint for the, with, for the system uh, evolving with the time. And similarly, magnetic uh, mean magnetic helicity is also very small than B square L, and therefore it cannot be taken as a conserved quantity. And so uh, vector potential square is taken as the conserved quantity for non-helical MHT decaying turbulent system, which is unlike the Hosking and Shekoshi result. And uh, so for the 2D non-helical system and the 3D non-helical system, we can see that on uh, uh, that the BRMS curves collapse on normalizing the time axis with the reconnection uh, time scale. And uh, they decay with the power law of t to the power minus 0 0.5, which agrees with the, uh, like, yeah, which agrees with the theoretical power law decay of BRMS uh, versus t when a, a squared is the conserved quantity. Also, I forgot to tell here in the helical case as well, we are getting a slope of minus 0 0.3, which is in close uh, agreement with t to the power minus 0 0.271, which is the theoretical uh, prediction of power law dk for BH, BHRMS versus uh, t when uh, helicity is taken as the conserved quantity. And so, So here, uh, so this is for the non-helical decaying turbulence for 2D decaying uh, uh, simulations. And this is for the helical. In both the cases, you can see that starting from small magnetic islands, they merge together via magnetic reconnection to form larger and larger magnetic islands. Yeah, this I'm skipping now. And uh, So here, this is the uh, power spectrum plot for magnetic power spectrum and magnetic helicity power spectrum with the evolution of time for 2D decaying turbulence. This is non-helical and this is the helical. So there the KP, the peak, the power spectrum peak shifts from larger wave number to smaller wave number, showing the inverse energy transfer. So this uh, blue dashed line corresponds to the magnetic helicity spectrum. Uh, for non-helical case, this magnetic helicity spectrum is very noisy. Uh, so I conclude by saying that uh, on the basis of the above results, the, it can be concluded that magnetic reconnection time scale is the dynamical time scale leading to inverse energy transfer in both 2D and 3D helical decaying MHT turbulence. And also the reconnection in 3D helical decaying MHT turbulence is quite similar to that in the 2D system, possibly because of the local anisotropy present in the system. Thank you. Thank you, Shreya, for the nice talk. We can take a couple of questions. Question is, so I mean, what exactly is the difference between uh, helically decaying MHD and non-helical decaying MHD? I mean, like where do you, in the equations, how, what exactly do you do? So uh, the main difference is for helical, helical decaying turbulence, the initial condition is we, we start with helical magnetic field. And for the non-helical case, the helicity is zero. We start with non-helical magnetic field. That is the main difference between both of them. Yeah, the, the MHT equations are same. The difference lies in the magnetic field. Yeah, uh, my question is that how do you define the time scale of uh, decay? of reconnection sorry um uh, this uh tau reconnection so th this will obtain from uh this induction equation when we solve the uh, induction equation when reconnection is taking place uh, uh for um for reconnection to be constant with time then uh so this is, uh, this is delta A by delta T for delta B by delta T. This would be equal to del cross U cross B minus del cross eta uh, mu naught J. And then both would be uh, 
uh, both have to be like equal for delta V by delta T equals to zero. And from that thing, and also at the reconnection zone uh, for the outflow rate and the inflow rate to be equal from both of these uh, thing, we can condition, we can obtain this uh, tau reconnection, uh, reconnection time scale. So like for, for general, for general, for Laplacian dissipation, n equals to two, and this is uh, square root of S L by B. Right. Uh, uh, I have another question. Uh, you said that in non-helical decaying turbulence, helicity is not conserved. So in non-helical decaying turbulence system, actually helicity is quite small, and that is why we cannot take it as a constraint. I see. So it's not a constraint, but it's still conserved. It remains zero, right? It's not yeah, like it, it, it Yeah, like almost zero, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can we can go to the next session. Thanks, Raya again.